Welcome once again to The Breakfast. Our first major conversation today is on the Academic Staff Union of Universities and their threats to once again go back on strike. We're speaking this morning with the ASU president, Emmanuel Osudeke, Professor, I beg your pardon, Emmanuel Osudeke. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Professor Osudeke. Thank you very much. Great to have you. Um, I've read through the report um, in the news and, of course, uh, some of the things that you've mentioned as the reasons, uh, you know, ASU might be going back on strike. But I would like you to, you know, quickly all share with us. So let's hear from the horse's mouth. Well, thank you very much. What I probably say is that we're not sure we're going on strike tomorrow. And what we say was that government gave us the end of this month to um, ensure that all the issues that we're having problem with are resolved. Uh, but up to now, none of those issues have been resolved. Among these issues are, number one, as a bad meeting, they showed us evidence that 30 billion era is a CBN account, and that that money could be transferred to, within a short period so that it can be allocated to universities to develop their infrastructure. But up to now, that money has not been transferred. And even that money has not been allocated to the university for paper. Two, they also show evidence that they had mainstream our EAA and that it was part of the supplementary budget, 22 billion, and that it was for 2021. Up to now, we would not have for them. On the third one was that issue of uh, uh, Utah's, our university transparency and accountability solution, which we believe is a good alternative to IP that creating problem within the university system. They indicated that there's only one thing left, and that is that there's a need for us to demonstrate the users to the end users, which are the boss unit of the university and the registry, which we did more than two weeks ago. And up to now, we have not heard from the NISDA, who is supposed to do the test. When in 2019 to early 20, when we were on strike, they promised that within a very short period, these Utahs will be, uh, valid, will, be, will be tested and approved, and it can be used for the payment of university salaries. As we speak, as I speak to you, so, we have some of our colleagues for the past 16 months have never received any salary. We have people receiving what we refer to as a tested salary. That is, you are a professor, and you wake up one morning and you get 120,000 naira, which is less than 25% of your salary. All our colleagues who are from outside the university, universal, all our colleagues who are from outside the country, who are on contract, you know by our law, if you are a foreigner, you cannot get a full-time job. Many of our colleagues who have that job, some have been sacked, some are not any salary, because these looters, uh, these are IPs, they do not take care of them. And the, when you go all over the world, you enter a university, one of the one of the index, one of the indices for Ranke University is the idea that it's global, that you have people who are from all over the world working in a university, but in Nigeria, we are even going to a village. When you enter a typical university, 90% of the academics are from that state, which is not the global best practice. Till today, we have not heard from them. We also don't have the issue of, of a state university. If you find out the, the proliferation of university, the government just will up one money, take a paper to the National Assembly, and within two or three days, four universities are created. And these governors who cannot fund one, they have. Where is, is, is that, that is how university should be? So we also talk about that there's a need to have a stringent measure put in place by National Assembly to ensure that you don't just wake up and start a university in your village and you go. The next government comes and start another university in the village. So that's another one also. We also discuss the issue of um, uh, this visitation panel, that there's a need to release the report as quickly as possible. Those are some of the issues we discussed. And then finally, we also discussed the issue of renegotiation between ASU and federal government. The last time this agreement, this table we are using today, was approved in 2009. As of 2009, a professor earned more than 2,000 naira per month in Nigeria, two to 3,000 dollars per month. Today, a professor earned less than 800 naira, 800 dollars per month. How can you attract the best brain if your salary is less than $800 per month? And that's why if you look at the doctors, they are living. 
No, so, sorry, sorry, so, Prof, Prof, can, you, can you take that again? You said in 2009, the professor earned how much? In 2009, the, the salary of a professor is equivalent to about between two and three thousand US dollars per month. Two to three US dollars per month. Today, it's less than eight hundred dollars per month. Like eight hundred dollars, you can convert it. A, a typical professor in it by four hundred thousand. When you multiply four hundred thousand by five hundred, for example, as the exchange rate, it's less than eight hundred. Would that sustain this system? Can we be one of those the best university in the world? You have such salary? Can we attract best brain? So that is the problem. The team with the stop talking now. We had a discussion with government, we had a negotiation with their team, and we are reached a conclusion in May. Up to now, the government has not told us they want to that principal with the government to give them permission to sign up that agreement. But up to now, we have not heard the word from them. Those are the issues for which we said government should implement. And we met early in August. After that meeting, they promised to reach us by the end of August. But today, the last year of August, we've not had anything from them. And we told them at that point that if at the end of August, nothing is done, then the government should be held responsible for whatever happened. That, that was my statement. That whatever happened to this system, the government should be held responsible for failing in their responsibility. That was my statement. All right. Thank so, you. So, Prof, you, you, so what you're saying is that all of these demands that the government agreed to, they haven't taken any steps on any of them? What even one of all the issues, even the simplest one, of transferring the money from an account in central bank to another account in central bank, they, they say it's too difficult. You know, by, by the rule today, all federal accounts are in CBN. Hope you are aware. So if it's to transfer money from an account they showed us in CBN, to another account within CBN called the need assessment account, they cannot do it in three, three weeks. Then something is wrong. So, 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 what then you, do you think is the challenge here? And and have you been able to get any um, feedback from the government before uh, today? We've not got feedback. All I tend to get to them, they they, they, won't, they won't respond. All right, so I want us to go, you know, one after the other and look at the UTAS um, versus IPPIS. Um, what was the government's challenge with using UTAS? The, we, we, you know, this thing started in 2013. And when we met with government, we told government that this year IPs cannot cater for the diversity of university. The university is not like a civil service where you have a single salary structure or you have just in a university diverse. You have foreigners working in Nigeria, Nigeria University, they should be working. Then you have contract that this salary, this their so-called IPs cannot capture the university for which they are, we are agreed to settle with property to come up with totality and they disappear in 2014. We didn't hear from them again. Until 2017, they came up and had to force everybody into that that program. And today, everyone knows that what we're saying is correct. Because the system is, is being gradually emasculated. People are paid salary as it pleases the, the account general office. I can tell you, two months ago, Unilad, in July, a professor earned 407,000 naira salary. A student later earned 27,000. It happened in many of the university. And what was the issue? They just sat down and deducted whatever they want to deduct. I pay whatever I please them. Then the next month, we were told that a number of our colleagues, were, our people, even those who registered, were paid double salary. We paid double salary. But when we investigated, we found out it was not correct. Only a few were double, paid double salary, but people were threatening that they were paid double salary to be deducted. These are the crises we have with that piece. But Utah is designed for the university system, but they gave us a challenge, which we took. And within three months, we develop a better alternative. We have tested this alternative at the National Assembly to the senior president. We have shown, we have developed, we have demonstrated it to the academic office. We have demonstrated it to the chancellors and registrars and bosses. We have also demonstrated it to the, to the bursary unit, staff in charge of payroll in the unit, and personnel in, a, in, a, in the registry. And nobody has complained about this program. It's homegrown, it will cost nothing. It's free for this country, made in the Nigeria. Not this one, the, the IP that is made outside the country. All our data are sent to the 
to their domain in outside the country, which is not done anywhere in the world. And that's creating so much problem in the system, you can check. Even the, 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 the doctors and what have you, they will have to, to do with that is the civil service even. But the, the, everybody is being masculated. No check. People are being recruited uh, uh, without the call to the center. And what have you? It's a big, it's a big crisis, and there is a need for government to look at our in homegrown program and use it for the system. We shouldn't be begging the foreign people all the time. We have the brain, and our brain can develop whatever you think of this country. We are challenged, but did this country prefer to go out and get some people from there to develop whatever happening system at their own rate? And we pay heavily. Nigeria is paying heavily for IPs, very heavily, and which is unnecessary. No, yeah. you can do substitute in your country. And there are checks and balances. In a piece, there is none. A Catalina pay you what he likes. Who is checking them? But if a university pays, there, should, there are checks in the system that we ensure that what university is doing with Utah are, are controlled, but now there's nothing. All it's right. just a you decide who will pay it, how do you pay it, how much you pay. Okay, and now I, I want us to, you know, talk um, also on uh, one of the things that I noticed or I read in the report. It says that the federal government has stopped taking ASU's calls. Who, who has ASU been calling in particular? Well, I think that's why I the press uh, something, but we made calls, made calls to, the, to the minister, made calls to all of them. So I think that I just, just off the line. So which of the ministers are you, are you referring to now? The Minister of Education. Okay, and uh, there was, there's no one picking uh, the calls there or returning yeah, your calls. Like I said, like I said, those ones should not be the issue now. Yeah, I, know, I just wanted to clarify. To, you know, I just wanted to clarify if that we was. Uh, it today. If at the end of today they did not respond to us, then we will, we will know what to do. Okay, and now um, you mentioned thirty billion naira investment development fund. Um, you know, I, I believe that's the same as the revitalization fund that was uh, mentioned. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, what are the what are the true demands, and why does ASU need thirty billion naira for infrastructure development, um, while the universities are still earning from school fees and 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 whatnot? Thank you very much. The thirty billion is not for us. It is for the Nigerian university yes. system. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Went to the university. Let me let me maybe better look at the background. As we speak today, our universities are not well funded. In 2012, the federal government set up a committee, its own committee, to go around the university and look at the state of infrastructure. And that committee gave a report, we need assessment report, that highlighted the problem in the system. We have a university today that's at that time, I think you can see there, where chemistry, they are using bossy burner. They are using stove as bossing burner. We have a university where you have 16 students in one room, in one room as hosted. And each of the students have to have a, have a stove. All right. Seems we've lost uh, Professor Osudeke, the, the president, uh, Academic Un um, Staff Union of Universities, ASU. Um, the conversation is really about uh, the well, talk about going back on strike um, at the end of today, the 31st of August. Um, the professor says that the federal government has not, you know, gone uh, forward with some of the promises made in the last memorandum of action that was signed. Uh, that includes a revitalization fund, a 22 billion naira that was also promised uh, to the um, um, uh, union and to lecturers. Uh, Prof, can you hear us now? I'm hearing you. Are you hearing okay, me? Okay, brilliant. Yes, yes, we can. Welcome back. Go ahead, please. So what we are saying is that this money is part of that 1.3 trillion. You recall, in 2014, 2013, uh, 2 billion were released. They agreed they would release 2 billion every year for five years. 2 billion were released in 2014, during Jonathan era. And between then and now, they have released 20, 30, and what have you, which is not solving the problem. So this idea, this one that is going to be released is also from that fund, which we believe will also help to upgrade some of this equipment you have with the university. So, they agree, and the money they said is there. They showed all the evidence, showed all the bank statement from CPN, showing that you still have 34 billion naira in that account. We they indicated that the Ministry of Education said they were going to write to CPN to transfer the money to the assessment account. And for us, to ensure that that money is not mismanaged, there is a committee put in place known as the Implementation Monitoring Committee. That committee was supposed to now sit down and allocate that university to money to university based on need. 
But till now, that committee have not met. Uh, uh, so that is the problem. Yeah, yeah. On, on the average, you know, how, I'm not sure if you, you have this information, but on the, on the average, how much was, you know, each university meant to get from that 30 billion? Thank you. That is the, what the IMC ought to do. They will sit down and look at each university, look at their, 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 year, their, their size, and then, and then the year, the problem they have, and then decide how much to get. That's what the committee will do. I'm wondering that it's well spent. That's, that's the idea of that. IMC meeting to look at those particular um, how much each university should get. Okay. Um, Prof, there's people who have mentioned that it, it maybe is time that uh, we look also closer at what universities make annually and how some of these funds can be used to better fund infrastructure. Because it's heartbreaking, like you mentioned, 16 people staying in one room in a university. That's not even human. Um, um, and, you know, convenient for learning. I've seen also videos of some university hostels, and it's really, really heartbreaking uh, seeing that human beings live in those conditions or have to use those bathrooms. Um, so has ASU also taken time to speak with vice chancellors to see how in any way that they can also fund certain details of infrastructure here and there? Thank you very much. If you watch today, the federal universities and most state universities are not charging tuition fee. What they are charging, they don't have charges. For example, the, um, the ICT development, ICT levy, they pay for hostel accommodation, they pay for uh, uh, health, medical services, and what have you. These are what they are paid, they pay, which they are supposed to use specifically for some of those seats. Are you following? So yes, that is what they are supposed to pay. But I also agree with you that in many of these universities, these funds are mismanaged, which we are also working on now. I can agree with you. The funds are not properly used. Two, we also have, we are hearing now, I hope it's not true, that even the, 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 the federal government is trying to get this vice chancellor to remain between 20 and 40 percent of this fund to the, to the, um, uh, what do you call it? This account where they share money account. as part of uh, as a part of uh, uh, revenue generation, which is not correct. The student are going to have pay for ID card and you want to take 20 30 percent of the money to go and put it into um, the, uh, what do you call it? That account for sharing. I don't think it makes sense. Those are money problems we are having. Are there interferences by the ministries as you speak? So, on a yearly basis, no less than 30 to 40 group who want to visit university for X, Y, team, which is not necessary in those days, it's not necessary. University autonomous community. But today, all the vice chancellor are being put to that pressure. Today, somebody called them, we want to abuse. This one, you call you, they call you, they're the same teams. Even a team went to a university to talk, look at number of people who have died in the university. If a, a team from a ministry, a university, look at how many people who have died. These are just interferences and create the problem in the system. And I think they should allow university to go on as autonomous, uh, uh, they, have, they have autonomy. And they also step on how the presidency can step in by saving visitation every five years. And at the end of that visitation, you can deal with those visitors that mismanaged money. But if you watch out until that, at our last strike, for 11 years, the president did not send any visitation to the university, which is completely wrong. So if these checks are, 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 are implemented as they are stated in the law, we will not have a VC mismanagement. But I can assure you, we are also working on that as a senior, and we are going to let you know in future. But then we do investigation in many of the universities. The fund has to be money. Yeah, before we move on, I think it's important that that conversation is had um, because if those things are not checkmated, then you know we, Nigerian students will continue to, of course, bear the brunt of these you know, bits of um, mismanagement here and there. Vice chancellors have a lot of questions to answer. It's pretty much the same thing with uh, CMDs in, in uh, hospitals across the country um, with regards to mismanagement of funds. But Asu, I, I hope that you, know, you can get um, with that. Um, some other thing that I want to answer, um, ask you, and these are just ideas. Hopefully, we'll get to speak with the government um, sometime this week and get their own side 
on why they've not been able to fulfill the promises made in the memorandum of action. But some other thing that I want to ask is, you know, I'm, I'm a prof, I'm sure you've also looked at universities outside Nigeria and see how they also derive funding. You see a lot of universities doing very, very interesting research, being able to sell courses, um, um, uh, online courses, and the person in, in Ibadan, you know, can attend an online course from Yale or from any, any, any part of the world. Where do you think Nigerian universities are also failing with regards being able to self-fund and, and generate income for themselves uh, better? They, they, I, I don't know if they're working enough on, on new ideas with which they can fund themselves, they can generate income um, for the university. Thank you very much. This is actually one of the outcomes of that need assessment report. You see, the, where we are today in the world, you need well-equipped laboratories to do meaningful research. To do meaningful research that will be accepted what a laboratory is told as a policy burner. If you apply for a grant, you do that laboratory, will you get a grant? So what we are saying is that develop the university to what standard? To standard that they can compete with any other university for grant. Compete com, uh, 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 with any for, for funding, and then you, you to be funded. So that is what we are talking about. Place the standard of the university to such a way that they can compete with any other one within the world to get grants, to get international grants that we are talking about. And what have you? That is where we are. I can tell you, you just want to spend some money to buy a piece. It took us also funded by us in million. Um, it seems we've also lost sound from uh, the ASU president there, Emmanuel, or Professor Emmanuel Osudeke. Um, I hope that we can reconnect with him. These are really just looking at different angles with which uh, the Nigerian universities uh, seem to not be properly functioning. And, of course, getting deeper into the conversation concerning the, you know, the, the call for another strike or, or going back on strike by ASU if the federal government fails to fulfill their promises by the end of today. And that's what I'm going to be asking next. Um, you know, is that a likelihood that there will be strike? And, you know, what is the fate of those who are currently in universities? 2020 was a tough year for Nigerian students. If you remember, there was a long strike um, side by side with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, are we ready to, of course, relieve those uh, times again? Uh, Professor, welcome back. Thank you. All right, so now I, wa I want to speak about, you know, what happens after today. What is the likelihood of ASU once again downing tools uh, after uh, midnight today if the federal government does not respond uh, to your calls? Thank you very much. You know, you know, our friends in the press, I, you know, my press conference, uh, my speaking with the media, I'm not saying we are going on strike tomorrow. I never. What I said is that if at the end of this month, federal government did not implement what they told us on the 2nd of August that they will implement, then the co country should hold the government responsible. And in my, but well, you know, you know, we don't just wait for one money and go on strike. It's a process starting from the branches up. So it's not, we are not going to just say tomorrow we will start a strike. It, we, our senior will not behave that way. But our organs will start meeting. We are starting meeting by, 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 by Ted. I'm going to start some meetings and we'll look at the issues. Then we'll take it off from there. We didn't say we are going on strike at the end of the month. I've never used such words. Okay. Uh, thanks for clarifying that. And uh, that, that's also a very interesting mm -hmm. point uh, that you've made. Um, I, I also want your thoughts on uh, Nigerian students um, who, of course, went through a very, very torturous uh, uh, 2020. Uh, the strike and, of course, combined with the COVID-19 and some of all of that. A lot of them have had their um, graduation years delayed, you know, longer than they should have. Um, I, do you have concerns as the president of ASU for these students? Do you have also, do you, do you have students who, or children rather, who are currently in Nigerian universities? Thank you very much. All my children are in public university. No two have graduated, but the other two are in public university. But let me tell you. Oh, well. Uh, once again, um, of course, uh, every now and then we have to deal with these network challenges. Uh, we're speaking with the ASU president, and I would really, really love to hear uh, his response to that question. Hopefully, we can reconnect with him soon. Um, what is the fate of Nigerian students from the third? Like he's just mentioned, that, that they're not necessarily going on strike today, 
but you know they would start discussions you know and from the third you know they would continue with those discussions and see what the next steps are uh, to be taken uh, will the Nigerian government respond will that money that is supposedly with the Central Bank of Nigeria be paid to the ASU account or not what are the next steps that needs to be taken with regards IPPIS and UTAS uh, these are some of the burning questions with, you know, regards some of all of this. And how much better can the Nigerian government fund education, fund universities, put them in a better shape? Look at the state of hostels that Nigerian students live in. It is heartbreaking. Look at the level, you know, of infrastructure that is in the research laboratories across Nigerian universities, public universities to be precise. It is really, really heartbreaking. Um, and, you know, you can basically watch some of these universities a, you know, dilapidate, you know, you can see them break down over time. The universities that you see, um, you know, that are, you know, currently you could call the pride of a nation 20 years ago. Um, but, you know, you can't find any of all that, um, you know, state of infrastructure in those same universities today. We'll take a short break and uh, we'll be back on The Breakfast. Don't go anywhere.